Welcome to CSE Guru. In this session, we will discuss the phases of a compiler. Compiler is a program that converts the source code in one language to an equivalent machine understandable language called the object code. So, the compiler is actually doing a translation process. This translation process is not easily done in a single step. It will be carried out by sequence of phases of the compiler. So accordingly, there are six different phases of the compiler. Lexical analysis, syntax analysis, semantic analysis, intermediate code generator, code optimizer and code generator. So these are all the six different phases of the compiler. So in each phase, it transforms one representation of the source program to the another representation. The six different phases of the compiler is actually divided into two main parts. One is analysis part and another one is synthesis part. So in analysis part, the compiler will accept the source code as an input and it will scan the complete source code. Then the source code will be divided into different constant pieces and for each one, it will impose a grammatical structure on them. This grammatical structure will help to create the intermediate representation of the source program. This intermediate representation is used as a reference by the synthesis part of the compiler. Also, in analysis part, it identifies the syntax and semantic errors present in the source program. So once it identifies the error, it will be reported to the user to correct it. Also in analysis part, it will collect the information about the source program and it will be stored in a special data structure called the symbol table. So this symbol table will store the information like identifiers, subroutines and its related attributes. And this symbol table is used as a reference by all other phases of the compiler. This analysis part of the compiler is called the front end of the compiler. So the first three phases of the compiler that is the lexical analysis, syntax analysis and semantic analysis will come under the analysis part. Next synthesis part. So in analysis part it will create the intermediate representation of the source program and and the information of the source program will be stored in the symbol table. So this two, that is the intermediate representation and this symbol table is used as a reference by the synthesis part and it will produce the target program as the output. So the synthesis part is also called the back end of the compiler. So the next three phases of the compiler that is intermediate code generation, code optimization and code generation will come under the synthesis part. Phases or structure of the compiler. So initially the source program is given as an input to the compiler. The lexical analyzer will accept source code as an input and scans the source complete source code and it will produce a meaningful token that is in each phase of the compiler it transforms the source program from one representation to the another representation. So the lexical analyzer will create a representation called the tokens meaningful tokens. Next this tokens will be given as an input to the syntax analyzer. So the syntax analyzer will analyze the tokens and it will create a tree like structure called the parse tree and then this parse tree is given as an input to the semantic analyzer. Semantic analyzer will actually do the type checking. Next uh, once the type checking is done this will be given as an input to the intermediate code generator. This intermediate code generator will produce a representation called the three address code. Then this will be passed as an input to the code optimizer. This code optimizer will actually done the optimization of the three address code. And then this will be given as an input to the code generator. And this code generator will produce the target program as the output. And finally, we will get the target program. So, uh, it will convert the source program from one representation to another representation. It also maintains a symbol table. That is, the lexical analyzer will scan the input and will collect the information about the source program. And that information will be stored in the symbol table. The symbol table information is used by all the phases of the compiler. Also, in each phase, during its representation, if it identifies any error, that will be handled by the error handler. So, once, is, once the error is identified, it will be reported to the user to correct it. Now, we will discuss each phase of the compiler in detail. The first phase of the compiler is lexical analysis or lexical analyzer. So the lexical analyzer is also called scanning. The source program is given as an input to the compiler and the lexical analyzer will scan the complete source program and group the input characters into a meaningful sequence called the lexem. These lexems will be compared with the patterns and produce output as 
tokens. The lexical analyzer also collect information about the source program and it will be stored in a special data structure called the symbol table. So that symbol table will consist of two entries. One is token name and attribute value. The token names may be identifier name, subroutine name likewise. And the attribute values are the data type, scope and the return type of subroutines. The lexical analyzer also stripes out the white spaces and commands specified in the source code. For example, x is equal to y plus z into 50. If this is passed as an input to the lexical analyzer, the lexical analyzer will scan the input. So the first character it will scan is x. x is, x is considered as a lexem. That will be compared with the pattern. Uh, it has to identify whether it is a keyword or identifier. So x is not a keyword, it is an identifier. So it will be entered as identifier in the token. Since in a source program, more than one identifiers will be there. So the unique name is ID1. So we will enter it as ID1. If there is one any white space, that won't be considered by the lexical analyzer. Equal is a lexem that will be entered as assignment symbol in token. Y is a identifier that will be entered as ID2. Plus sign that is an operator that is entered as plus sign in token. Next, is it is a identifier that is entered as ID3. Star is a operator that will be entered as multiplication and 50 is a constant so that will be entered as constant in token next this is the structure of the symbol table so all the identifiers will be entered into the symbol table that is x y z and the operators it is not necessary to enter so only the identifier subroutines likewise we will enter into the symbol table so if you are considering the lexical analyzer the input to the lexical analyzer is x is equal to y plus z into 50 okay this is uh, passed as an input to the lexical analyzer so the lexical analyzer will analyze this input and it will produce token as the output so here x is considered as a lexem and for x the token is the token the produced token is id1 equal to y is a lexem with the token name id2 z is a lexem with the token name id3 into 50 so the lexical analyzer will produce this token as the output. The second phase of the compiler is syntax analysis or syntax analyzer. It is also called parsing or hierarchical analysis. So here uh, in lexical analysis phase, token is produced as an output and that output is given as an input to the syntax analyzer. So with the help of the token, it will prepare a grammatical structure or tree-like representation of the token stream called the parse tree. This parse tree is closely similar to the syntax tree where the operations will be specified in the interior node and the arguments will be specified in the leaf node. The syntax analyzer will also check for the order of operation should be consistent with the operator if you want to perform any arithmetic operation the, it should be consistent with the operators that is multiplication is having higher precedence than the uh, addition and subtraction operation so if uh, in uh, input if uh, both the operations present in the sense multiplication has to be performed first before the addition operation so it has to follow this precedence and associativity rule so if you are considering this syntax analyzer input to this syntax analyzer is the token produced by the lexical analyzer this is given as an input to the syntax analyzer this syntax analyzer will produce that is hierarchical tree like representation of the token stream called the parse tree. Now the parse tree will be id1 equal to id2 plus id3 into 50. So this is the parse tree produced by the syntax analyzer. Here the token is given as an input. The syntax analyzer will produce the intermediate representation called the parse tree. The third phase of the compiler is semantic analysis or semantic analyzer. The syntax analyzer will produce parse tree as the output. And that output is given as an input to the semantic analyzer. So with the help of that parse tree, the semantic analyzer will check for semantic consistency or semantic errors present in the source code. Next, the semantic analyzer will also do type checking. That is, uh, the identifiers and its data type will be stored in a symbol table. With the help of that symbol 
table information the semantic analyzer will do type checking so if there is any type mismatch in the sense that error will be raised by the semantic analyzer and it will be reported to the user for example if you are considering an array always the array index value should be a integer value it should not be a floating point value so this will be checked by the semantic analyzer and if there is any inconsistency that will be reported to the user next type mismatch for example if you wanted to perform any arithmetic operation a equal to b plus c here both the operands b and c should have a same data type if any one of the data type is different in the sense we have to change appropriately and then only we have to perform the arithmetic operation matching parenthesis if there is a open parenthesis present in the program appropriate closed parenthesis should be there so how many number of open parenthesis present in the program that many number of closed parenthesis should be there this also will be checked by the semantic analyzer if, if any parenthesis is missing that will be reported to the user the semantic analyzer will also check for the if else consistency that uh, that is a, if particular if statement is having a else part that should be matched with appropriate if statement it should not be matched with any other if, say, if statement in the program that also will be checked by the semantic analyzer and the scope of the variable or operation that also will be checked by the semantic analyzer in the input to the semantic analyzer is the pass tree produced by the syntax analyzer so in this pass tree if you are considering 50 is a constant value and suppose if id3 is a real value we have to convert this 50 to a real value and then only we have to perform the multiplication operation so the semantic analyzer will analyze the type mismatch here so the output produced by the semantic analyzer is also the parse tree so the semantic analyzer it will convert the constant value 50 to a real value that is int to real of 50 so the semantic analyzer will convert the constant value 50 to a real volume that is int to real of 50. So the semantic analyzer will also produce parse tree as the output. It will rectify the semantic errors present in the source code and it will be reflected in the parse tree. In this session, we have discussed the analysis part of the compiler that is lexical analysis, syntax analysis and semantic analysis. In the next session, we will discuss the synthesis part of the compiler thank you for watching this video